Hello, my name is Bruce Doran. I'm one of the staff scientists that works at Science North, specifically on the third floor in the wetlands lab. And what I want to do today is talk to you about mosquitoes and blackflies. And what I want to do is show you the habitats where mosquitoes and blackflies actually reproduce so that you can get a better idea of the life cycle of these incredible insects. So we are now in that perfect habitat of where mosquitoes will actually breed. And right here, we actually have what is called a vernal or temporary pool. And these are found pretty much in any wooded area. You'll even sometimes find them in your backyard. And these are pools of water that form uh, during the uh, spring rains or, or spring uh, runoff or snow melt. And then these pools will uh, be created and then they dry out during the summertime. And these are perfect breeding sites for mosquitoes. And generally what happens is that the females will either lay the eggs during the spring or the eggs are, have already been laid the year before into the mud. And then what happens, the eggs will then hatch and then we have little larvae that will then live within this. The larvae, which is the baby form of the mosquitoes, is actually aquatic. So they'll actually live in here, they'll grow, they'll eat algae and bacteria that are found in here, and they will then emerge out to become the adults that come and pester us that we know very, very well. So this is the perfect site for them to breed because there are no predators, there's no fish that will actually eat them, there's very few insects that will eat them, and you can find thousands and thousands of them, even with a single scoop, uh, either with your hand or a net. So this is a perfect site for them. The females will then emerge, as well as the adults, and we know that they bite. Females will bite. And the reason why female mosquitoes bite, same thing for black flies, is they want to get mammalian blood in order to make eggs. So she actually takes blood from uh, a mammal like us or maybe even a bird and then she will use the blood proteins in order to make more eggs, in order to make, create more babies. Now keep in mind that the adults themselves, including female, don't really feed on the blood. They use the blood in order to reproduce. The males and the females will actually pollinate uh, flowers, different types of flowers. So a lot of times people ask me, why are mosquitoes important? Well, without the mosquitoes, a lot of the flowers that we actually see, a lot of the plants wouldn't be pollinated without them. So they do have their ecological role. And they are uh, food for many different animals, including things like dragonflies that will eat uh, mosquitoes. Now, one thing between the female mosquito black fly, uh, mosquitoes and the female black flies is how the female mosquitoes actually take the blood. Their mouth part actually comes out like a needle. It's called a stylet, which it uses to actually pierce the skin in order to take uh, blood. So that's how she does it. Whereas a black fly is a slightly different mechanism in order to take blood. So it's kind of hard to control mosquito population, especially when you have things like this all over Ontario, all over people's uh, you know, land and things like that. So it's quite difficult to control mosquito population in this case. What people can do around their house is to empty any containers that might have water in them or to flush the water out on a regular basis so that the female mosquitoes don't lay eggs and uh, have larvae to actually grow in them. So there are things you can do around the house in order to control uh, mosquito populations. This habitat right here, the stream, is actually a great habitat for black flies. So unlike mosquitoes that live more in these vernal pools and stagnant pools, black flies love creeks. They love moving waters. And they actually start their life in here, in this type of water. And what happens is that the larvae, the babies, will attach themselves to the bottom, usually rocks, and they will filter any particles that actually go through. And they actually have these mouth parts that we call cephalic head fans that are actually like little filters, little sieves, that will actually collect little particles in the water and then eat them. And usually what happens is the larvae will actually overwinter, they will stay in the water over the winter, and then they will come out as adults in early spring. And that's why we tend to get the black flies in early spring. What the females will do is that they will lay eggs in the stream during the summer and the fall. These will hatch and then the larvae will then grow during the remainder of the uh, summer fall season in the winter in this type of uh, stream habitat. So streams are actually the place where black flies will be found. And also what's really neat is that if black flies are found in these type of streams, which are usually well oxygenated and cool, that's also a very good habitat for trout. So a lot of times, people that love to fish for trout will look for streams where black flies will actually be found 
because trout will actually eat black flies. Black flies are also very important to adults because they will pollinate all types of plants including blueberries. In fact, there were studies that actually demonstrated that if you have a good black fly population, it's sometimes correlated to blueberry production up here in the north. So, you know what? We'll take our black flies a little bit so that we have lots of blueberries. Now, the females, black flies, just like mosquitoes, will bite us, will bite humans and birds and other mammals, and mammals uh, in order to get blood in order to produce eggs. Now, unlike the mosquitoes, their mouth part isn't a piercing mouth part, but it's actually a cutting mouth part. So what they actually do is they cut the skin and then the other mouth part is like a sponge where they actually lap up the blood in order to get blood in order to produce eggs. So just like the female mosquitoes, she needs the blood in order to produce more babies. Now, there's not really much we can do to really control black fly populations like mosquitoes around our homes because whatever we do in this type of habitat will affect many other organisms in here including a trout that people like to, uh, uh, to uh, fish. So generally what I tell people is that it's not a good idea to affect streams, not a good idea to put anything in streams because it could affect all types of populations of different organisms. So if you see a nice stream like that, yes you will get black flies but keep in mind good habitat for certain fish like trout and also would probably be a good, ha uh, good area if you have blueberries to have a good blueberry population or production. As you can see these two types of insects reproduce and are found in habitats that are quite quite different. Stagnant habitats or creek habitats. Now there are things you can do to protect yourself against getting bitten by these two insects. One thing you could do is to wear light color clothing like I'm wearing right now. Another thing you could do is actually wear DEET, okay, that chemical compound. Now keep in mind if you're an adult you can get wear DEET that's about 30%. That's usually quite effective. But for children it is recommended that they use a much lower percentage of DEET, 5 to 10 percent, and even young children under the age of 5, it's usually recommended not to wear DEET. Now what you can do in that case is wear protective clothing. Wearing clothing where you're covering your face and your arms, you can actually wear uh, bug suits. They actually sell bug suits and they're actually quite effective against those insects. So these insects are found here in Ontario, pretty much throughout Ontario and we must live with them. They are really important ecologically and there are things we can do to protect ourselves against this. So next time you go out for a walk, just think about where these insects come from and how they make part, how they are part of our ecological system.